What's up everybody? Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to be talking about curtilage, what it is and how it applies if you ever have to use deadly force in self-defense. Welcome back everybody. Like I said, we're going to be talking about curtilage and some of y'all are already sitting there listening to this or watching this going, what in the hell is he talking about now? All right. I'm talking about curtilage. Okay. C-U-R-T-I-L-A-G-E. That is how you spell it. If you would like to go and look it up like I did, because the first time I heard that term, I was just like, the hell is this guy talking about? All right, and it was in a uh, self-defense seminar with a self-defense attorney, and I was I'm I'm kind of a rabbit hole kind of person, so I started down a little bit of a rabbit hole trying to actually figure out what curtilage was. Um, he was doing you know a good job explaining it, but I went in and the first thing I found was the Supreme Court definition of curtilage. And when I read that, I was just like, what in the hell? Okay, um, what you gotta remember and why I wanna have this conversation is we have a legal system, not a justice system. All right, I've done other videos where I've talked about a lot of the legalities involved in using deadly force in self-defense. All right, it's like also is where you know you can carry guns, where you got to get permissions, and where you can't, and all that stuff. So please feel free to go and check that out. I will say a lot of that is related to uh, South Carolina, but what I have also found just looking at some of the other states um, and talking to people from other states that have had permits. Uh, there's not too much difference on it. Um, there are some subtle differences here or there, so please make sure you go and do research for your state. All right, but the curtilage thing, I'm going based off of the Supreme Court definition and then some of the states around South Carolina, I did a little research to see how they're defining curtilage as well as how South Carolina defines curtilage because you're going to have the states having their own interpretation of what you know the Supreme Court says and a lot of it if you've ever really read some of our laws are very gray area. Um, I've we I mean, I've had this conversation with uh, other instructors, you know, self defense attorneys, and just people in the industry just to see, you know, when we're talking some of the laws and stuff. And sometimes when we actually get in there and read them, there's a lot of differences in how each person is understanding what it says. So. Please make sure you do your research. I will say uh, USCCA has a lot of great information out there. Whether you're a member or not, you can still go out to their website and find a lot of great information uh, with looking for what a lot of different states laws are and things like that. So please feel free to go out and check them out if you need any help. They even have an app you can download onto your phone that'll help you out with that stuff. But make sure you're doing your research, you know, for your state. Uh, if you need help with that, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, but again, this is the Supreme Court definition. I think it was like South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and maybe Tennessee. I looked at, I mean, a few other states and was just trying to make some quick notes to kind of help people understand because like I said, it is a legal system, not a justice system. What we see as justice might not necessarily be legal. Okay, so understand what you can and can't do. If you are a constitutional carry state where you don't have to have like a permit class or anything like that, or if you're, even if your state uh, issues permits uh, without, <coughs> excuse me, without you taking a class, please go and take, there are classes out there in these states that will teach you the laws. Please learn your laws. 
Yes, just because you're constitutional carry, just because they issue a permit without a class, your thing you do, fingerprints, background check, fill out paperwork, and then they send you a permit. Do your research, people, because there are a lot of things within the legal system, the laws, that suck that you cannot do, even if you have a permit. Okay, and that's why I wanted to have this conversation around curtilage and a lot of the other legal videos that I've done to help make sure people understand what they can and can't do. And I'm not going to get in this big, huge debate, oh, violation of Second Amendment, this and that. Look, I am behind all of y'all 100 percent. But unfortunately, society has not collapsed. We still have a most people will call it a judicial system. I don't call it a judicial system. It is a legal system. Because judicial implies that justice is being served, and sometimes justice is not being served. All right? That's, that's just my philosophy on it, how I feel about it and stuff. You feel different, so be it. I really don't give a shit. But I want to make sure everybody understands what curtilage is. Curtilage is the area around your home. So when you step outside your back door, front door, side door, whatever door, you are now on curtilage. Your front yard, your front porch, your back porch, your deck, your backyard, your driveway, where, however far your property goes back into a field or back into a forest or trees or whatever, that all is called curtilage. Okay? And that's why I wanted to have this conversation. It, it, it doesn't matter if you've got a, no trespassing signs. It doesn't matter if you've got a 20-foot fence surrounding your property. Even if somebody jumps over that with the no trespassing signs, it still falls under curtilage. And I'm going to explain a little bit more of what I'm talking about. All right. But the, the curtilage is what's outside of your home. Inside your home is a totally different ball game. Go back in and watch some of my other videos. I'm not going to sit here and elaborate on that because I've already talked about that in a previous video. This is mainly focusing on the curtilage, but this is outside your home. Inside is totally different. If you have an attached garage or detached garage, when you are in them, if you're attached, you're in your home, but again, they got to be inside. If you have a detached garage and you're in your garage, that's your dwelling, okay? That is part of your residence, but they still have to be inside, meaning if somebody comes in your driveway, all right, walking up your driveway with a two-by-four, you, know, you can't just start popping rounds off. I know, everybody, you're probably sitting there like, well, that's fine. Hey, look, I'm only telling you what the legal system says for the laws. What you do after you watch this video is on you, all right? So I'm not trying to force anybody anything. I'm not saying you can't defend yourself, but there are, I don't like to say limitations, but there, there are some things, again, like I said about this, that suck. But what I mean is if I'm standing on my deck, all right, and I've got a real long driveway going down one way, I would say it's at least 50 yards, the length of the driveway. And my deck, I can step out on my deck, look down that driveway and see all the way to the road. I, matter of fact, I can see all the way further past that. But if I'm on my deck, I'm on curtilage. And if somebody walks off the street coming up the road or coming up the driveway with a two by four, I can't draw my gun and shoot them, especially for South Carolina, because no, South Carolina is not a uh, retreat state. We are a stand your ground state, but they want you to try to avoid it. And honestly, you should. No, the best gunfight is no gunfight. Taking a life is not easy. Even if you're protecting yourself, it's not the easiest thing in the world, no matter how big and bad you think you are and how much shit you talk. It's not. But what would happen if I were to draw my gun, shoot that person, 
and the cops get here, they're going to look at where they're laying, where my casings are laying, and be like, why don't you go in your house, lock the door, and call the police? Why don't you take two steps off of your deck, get in your vehicle, and drive away and call the police? Because I could have avoided the situation. I don't have to, but I could have. Those are thing factors that they're all going to look at. So that's the end. The very end of that driveway is still curtilage, even though that's 50 yards. When I go down to my range, that's probably 500 yards from my house. And once I get down there, I'm on my property. That's considered curtilage. All right. So let's get into what the Supreme Court definition of curtilage is. The area around a house that the homeowners use as part of their daily lives. Yes, that's what I said. I didn't stutter. You weren't hearing things. <laughs> the area around a house that the homeowners use as part of their daily lives. Did anything say I have a 20 foot radius of curtilage from my front door or around my house? Or do I have a 20 yard radius around my house? Or do I have 50 feet from my front door and back door? There was no distance in there. That's what I'm talking about. Nothing in there gives you a distance on this stuff. Did anything in there saying um, that I had to have a uh, six foot high fence with no trespassing signs all over it? Or anything about no trespassing signs? No, nothing about a fence. The area around a house is a homeowner's use their, as part of their daily lives. I mean, to me, that's, that's about as vague as you could possibly be about something. So let's go in here and let's kind of look around. And like I said, I looked at some of the other states, including South Carolina. I didn't actually label this state was saying this. I just kind of went through and just wanted to make some quick notes to give everybody a good understanding of what these laws say. So another one. All right, this is, this is not anything Supreme Court. These are all state uh, individual states. The area immediately surrounding a dwelling or the enclosed space of ground and buildings immediately surrounding a dwelling or house. Yes, I started to feel like I was reading Shakespeare. Okay, yes, I'm, I'm telling you, that's very vague. Anything about distance in there? No. Anything about no trespassing signs? No. But now it says, or the enclosed space of ground and buildings. So what type of enclosed space? Do I have to have a fence around my home? Do I have to have a building? You know, what type of enclosed space? Does it have to be a certain height? So see what I'm saying? This, this is why I wanted to have this conversation. Please, people, understand your laws, especially when it comes to self-defense and deadly force in self-defense. You need to understand all of your laws. Here's a good one. The distance from the home to the location. What location? Anything, all right, it says the distance, all right? How far is that distance? Did it say exactly what that distance was? Five feet, five yards? 50 yards, 500 yards, five miles. Whether the next one, <laughs> this, I'm telling you, they get better and better. Whether the location is an enclosure surrounding the home. So we're back to an enclosure surrounding the home. What type of enclosure? Does it have to be a chain link fence, barbed wire fence, constantine wire? Does it have to be a wood fence, metal fence? Does it have to be six feet, eight feet, 10 feet high? I mean, it doesn't, none of it specifies. The nature of the use to which the location is put. Yep. If you feel like you're getting dumber by the second, yes, that's the way I felt when I was researching this stuff. I think I lost some brain cells along the way. So I'm gonna read it again. The nature of the use to the, to the nature of the use to which the location is put. What use? What location? Where are we putting it? This is, when I saw this, I was like, this could be taken 
so wrong. And I, I'm going to read it so everybody can understand what I'm talking about. All right. The steps taken by the resident to protect the area from observation by people passing by. If you're sitting there thinking what I was thinking the first time I read that, people are in trouble. All right. So again, the steps taken by the resident to protect the area from observation by people passing by. What area? What observation? So now, now we said that. I'm going to tell you the way I am interpreting this. If you walk by my house or drive by my house and look at it, I can use deadly force in self-defense. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the way I'm reading it. Some of y'all are like, no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I might get some comments, a little bit more comments on this one than some of my others. All right. But li let's listen to it. The steps taken by the resident to protect the area from observation by people passing by. From observation, that means they're observing your house. That means I look at your house by people passing by, whether I walk or drive by. That's the way I'm interpreting that. That I can just sit out on my port front porch, watch somebody drive by, and if they look at me or my house, I can shoot them in self-defense. Now, no, that doesn't mean I would do that. I'm sure some jackass is going to be like, oh, this guy's threatening to shoot people outside of his house. Ah. So I just want you to understand when it comes to being outside your home, you really need to treat it like you're out in public. You've got to be in fear for your life. That means they have to have means and opportunity to hurt or kill you. And that's even if they hop over your fence in your backyard, all right, jump over your fence in your front yard or whatever. Because, again, I just sat here and read everything to you. You can rewind it and listen to it all over again. There's nothing in there that says if you have this certain fence at this certain height with these certain signs, as soon as they're in your yard, you can shoot them in self-defense or I should say use deadly force in self-defense, whatever it might be. And so, please understand your laws, folks, all right? If, especially if you're in South Carolina, please go and check out my other laws up under the South Carolina concealed carry category, all right? Matter of fact, I'll have them uh, linked in at the end of the video here, so you can go in there and take a look at them. But I just read you what some of the laws are, depending on your state, all right? And I also read you what the Supreme Court said. Very, very gray area, folks. Don't do the wrong thing thinking you're doing the right thing. Yes, they kind of make this a little bit hard for law-abiding citizens. I can tell you right now, criminals ain't going to give shit about that. Just like everybody talking about, oh, you don't need guns, give up your guns, that's fine. But criminals are still going to get them no matter who gives them up. I mean, you think taking uh, guns away from law-abiding citizens is going to stop criminals. I just, I don't understand that mentality. I don't remember who it was. I heard him talking about it on Sean Ryan's podcast. And he was like, all right, this person goes in and shoots the place up. So everybody that didn't shoot the place up has to give up their guns. Makes sense. But I'm not going to get on that soapbox right now. That's a video for a different day. Understanding what curtilage is is what I wanted to help everybody under, help out here. All right? So do your research. See what your state says if you're not in South Carolina. I want to thank everybody for watching. All right? The support, everything, subscribing, sharing, commenting. Please continue to help support the page. We're going to continue to get out great videos as best we can. All right, and every little bit counts. All right, make sure you go check out Core Essentials, uh, SCGS 10. Make sure you check out X, XS Sites, XS Sites. 
with SCGS10 and NoOtherChoice.com with SCGS5. Uh, anything you need, is you're going to find it in one of those three places. Make sure you use my promo codes. All right, again, thank you for watching. I hope this has helped. And always remember, folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're fucking dead. Train to live. See you on the range.